Hello, guys and gals. Welcome back to another episode of the Some Ordinary Podcast. We are here with me, Oompaville, and Nuxtaku, and of course, our favorite online political commentator, Destiny. How's it going, my man? Hey, going pretty good. How you doing? Oh, dude, we're doing just fine. We notice you keep getting yourself into heat, and we love having you on here when you get yourself into heat. It's my... Uh... Favorite part, anytime I leave, like, anytime I go out for a vacation, it's always you're starting shit with somebody, dude. Well, you know, I can't help myself, so. I feel like this has been relatively tame compared to normal, but, yeah. I don't know, man. Yeah. Ever since you failed the cheese ball test, I've seen you in a different way. Well, listen, yeah, you're not the only one, apparently. Yeah. What can dude, I say? I just I'm love... just a massive, huge piece of shit to people, at least after they decide they don't like me, yeah. But like, I retroactively the also that... into the past, so I guess, yeah, you know. I just love the fact that it's like you're too clouded to interact with people. It's just, it's so dumb. It's, have you ever seen The Butterfly Effect? This movie's like uh, 20 years yeah. old, I think, with uh, I mean, like I'm Ashton with Kutcher or something. Mm -hmm. Okay, never yeah. mind. I was going to make a joke, but now none of you have seen it, so you guys. I've seen it. The Zoomer <laughs> podcast? We, I know we got YouTubers <laughs> here. Does that mean we're all 20 years old as well? It's fine. Okay. I, I've, I seen got, it, I've, seen right. I've seen it, I've seen it, I've seen it. No, I forgot the joke now. It was going to be a dumb joke anyway, so. <laughs> God damn it, what do we make you feel old? Jesus Christ. Yeah, you did. No, I feel bad. Thanks. <laughs> so how's it, how's it going with you you've been in uh you I've, I've noticed that you're like so aside from all the ludwig nonsense which by the way i mean i'm cool with ludwig or whatever but it's like i've seen you like pop up and i've seen you like get into beefs with them you like outed a dude for cheating on a significant other and shit it's just the wildest destiny arc man i listen i just <laughs> these people okay <laughs> what, the problem what happens is that like when i if I'm dealing with people online, I'm just I shouldn't respond to a lot of the random personal attacks, and they're in everywhere. Especially the and the frustrating thing too is it's for people that shouldn't even know who I am. They only do because like a friend of a friend doesn't like me, and in this case, I'm always meeting Hassan. <laughs> uh, so he's like talking to people and like just saying random weird shit, uh, which is fine personally. If people want to share like me, that's fine. But then when it leaks out into public streams, it's like okay, like I don't like that there are audiences that have these really weird opinions of me just because somebody doesn't like me in a friend group and they decides to like all come out in these different areas and then sometimes on a particular day i just might be annoyed or like i'm doing a lot of work and i'm just like over uh just like a lot of shit is going on that day and then i'll see something and i was like all right you know what it's like time to go nuclear on twitter so i'll just be so walking to the like, airport and i'll be like okay yeah you, you just don't like bad faith <laughs> interpretations of you is what you're saying right i don't even care listen be bad faith if you want just don't do it publicly don't talk about me you don't need to talk about me you're saying random shit about me so annoying Ugh. Yeah. So sometimes you just drop an end bomb on Twitter and just decide to end it. Give them real reason to get offended. Oh, no, we haven't gotten well, the real reason what, yet. Okay, we can get to it. When, <laughs> when I released that Keffel's video, it's like I was like in the video. It's like 10 minutes of like talking about Destiny's history because I was like bringing it into like the whole online left. I'm like, where did it all start? I'm like, it was kind of Destiny's like ground zero for it. Damn. The same weekend, you're just like tweeting out N-words. I'm like, that's great. The so one time I don't have to... <laughs> cut out something out of a video or like re it but then again it was like it is what it is I, like you know this i just want ahead. you to know personally for that video you did i hate you okay i hate you because now because now all these slimy loser motherfuckers can be like oh my god like look at kevil this person is a bad person and now you've got all these people you've got anna from the young turks like you know squirming away and all these other people like oh yeah well i saw this blah blah, blah. it's like here's this shit, a lot of this shit has been publicly known, okay, for years. How are you just now? It's because it's convenient now to do it. I, the thing that I hate the most is this, like, phenomenon where people will, they side with something because it's super popular socialist. They get a lot of credit mm -hmm. for it. And then, like, in a year or two, when the credit's all gone from that, then they're like, oh, guys, by the way, that thing's actually really bad. And then they get credit for recognizing their mistakes. It was like, are you serious? What the f You can't collect credit on both ends of things over and over and over and over and over, mm -hmm. over and over and over again. What the f Oh, sounds How like can you hate me for me. that? I literally was offering my own opinion, dude. God damn it! Well, because because of you, now a lot of people can can squirm away from it, and they think that they're they're getting credit for it. So for, basically, <laughs> just you, okay? Just in general, you, okay? <laughs> you were the inspiration for all of my n words on Twitter. That's what I'm trying to say. Damn, are, okay, damn. yeah, that's dude, how this, mad this you make me. This is what I love about like Destiny. Like he'll be on here and I'll say this. Like usually you'll have like people come up and be like, you know, I think you're a really great dude, but Destiny will just you. I mean, your inspiration for the N words. What the fuck, dude? Yeah. Oh, what's Jesus next Christ. on the agenda? Well, the agenda actually. What's next is something that was a little unsurprising. So have you guys been up with like this guy Nick Ricardo lately? Oh no. <gasps> Bro, so okay. I normally would not like fall like this stuff wouldn't fall into like the research docket like. The 
human dartboard. But are you guys all familiar with like Ricardo Law, right? I've been on his show. I feel it's horrible. It's like you know the. You've guy. been on Ricardo Law? Yeah, I was talking to him You're about. You're a legend. Uh, okay, thank you, thank you. Not all at once. Uh, sit down, everybody. But uh, no, you asked me about like um, copyright and contractual shit in the VTuber mm-hmm. world, so. That, that's why I was there. But, like, the thing is, like, you okay. know, I mean, he, I remember him telling me that, like, oh, yeah, I love whiskey, especially bourbon. Bourbon's great. I drink a lot. Don't worry. I'm not, not an alcoholic or anything, but I drink a ton. And I'm like, oh, okay, that's cool. And then you see, like, you know, flash forward a year, and it's, and it's not good. It's not good. Yeah, Ricada Law is, like, one of the weirdest, like, I don't want to say, like, fall from graces because I genuinely, like, feel really bad talking about it because it's, like, well, not bad. Like, I just feel like it's such a weird – It's like it's, like, instant, like – it's just like a, it, it's like hitting, it's like hitting a wall almost, right? Like it just happens to you instantaneously. One of the, so Ricada Law, for anybody that doesn't know, is a, a very, I would say one of the largest law channels on the internet. Now, LawTube is like one of these places where it's a bunch of lawyers who realize they can make a lot more money talking about the law on the internet versus dealing with, you know, legal shit in reality and all the crazy hurdles that come with it. Mm-hmm. So he got really popular about a year ago, basically covering um, the Amber Heard Johnny Depp trial. And there were like a, a the written house, I think was the other trial. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I think there was a third one. I'm not so sure. But um, he got really popular covering it. Like he would watch the Law and Order stuff, and it was just like he would give his actual viewpoints as a lawyer. And from my understanding, he is a lawyer barred in like Minnesota. I don't know how long anymore, given recent shit that's come out. So for anybody that doesn't know, like a couple of days ago, he ends up getting, I want to say arrested, swatted, well, arrested. But like the story is like somebody close to him ends up like filing in like a CPS war- or complaint or some bullshit. And like cops end up coming to his house and it's like they bust him on like, I think it's 25 grams of drugs. Uh, firearms yeah. in the house, which even if they're legal, being around illegal drugs, firearms, you, I think you get charged federally for it. Um, Caleb, you're probably going to have to like correct me on that because you know more about the gun laws in the states than I do. I don't know anything but, about drugs uh, though. <laughs> well, no. Like, if you, what if you have like illegal drugs? Oh, that's that's illegal gun, Perfect. Yeah, um, I know they they compound. Yeah, let's combine our forces. <laughs> yeah, I love drugs and guns. Um, so when you fill out, every time you go to purchase a firearm in the United States of America, there's an ATF form you fill out called a 4473. And on that form, you attest to never being addicted to or having done or maybe even possessing narcotics or whatever. Um, I think that if you get arrested for any sort of drug related thing, if there's like a gun in the vicinity, it's just like an extra in your ass basically they're like oh nope can't have that like you're on whatever and i think that the uh, gun charge is one of the three big ones that i or it's one of the three that nick is facing that's not one of, that's not the big one the big one is the 25 grams plus of <laughs> of either cocaine or whatever else so but anyway yeah drugs guns do not mix especially uh legally yeah yeah so he ends up uh facing up to 25 years in prison which obviously he's not going to do all of it i think he's already currently out on like bond or bail or whatever it is which was set at like 50 grand an insane amount almost um also, and, isn't he uh, representing yeah. himself in court and his two friends too yeah well his oh. wife and the other woman yeah maybe not the best well, idea why but... is representing yourself bad again like hold on somebody's got to fill me in on that like if you're a lawyer can't you isn't it okay to represent yourself or what, what's the whole rule on that uh i mean if i, I mean if i can professionally bullshit and guess <laughs> my my guess would be probably because you want some level of separation for somebody making decisions about you um mm-hmm. to have some kind of like dispassionate defense that's able to look at your case give you a good breakdown of the facts and then present them you know in court whereas you might be a little bit more emotionally attached you might be a little bit closer to it so it might be harder for you to imagine how somebody else might interpret it that'd be my guess i don't know if there's a another better actual reason i thought for it was it. more like just a stigma the judge won't treat you as favorably if you're um well, his judge apparently already hates him. He badmouthed the judge that oh. is currently overseeing his case. So well, it's because not... he has apparently has another defamation case against somebody, and the judge is over. Yeah, the, the same judge is looking over that case. He's kind of shit on on stream before. So yeah, it's not like, his his situation is all like the worst possible things, like sort of converging into one, just to just for him. Which look, I I always feel bad for everybody in any of these situations. Uh, I don't know if he's done anything exceptionally terrible. The only thing that I think is terrible for him is like, he has like kids in this situation and like those, they're the ones that have like no choice and like what their dipshit parents do. So I really do hope like at least one of the, fu- if not both parents get their shit together, at least for their kids or whatever, just to make sure, you know, all that is set aside. But I never like, 
I don't know much about like his history in terms of controversy. Like he covered law stuff, but I don't know why like there's a growing contingent of people on the internet that just like absolutely despise this guy for whatever oh, reason. He is, like, uh, he's very, very, very um, like I think aggressive and shit talky, and he just had maybe like in demeanor, I would say maybe uh, similar to me, but even like more aggressive. So like the kind of person you love to hate if they're wrong on something or if they fuck something up. Like I. I, I um there was a time where Nick Ricada, a bunch of people for some stupid f-ing reason, I don't know if he said the I don't know if he said a slur or if he was against trans people or something happened, but a bunch of people online were like, oh, we can go and file complaints against him at the bar. And a bunch of people started filing complaints against him, I think in the Minnesota bar or whatever. And what mm-hmm. they didn't realize was that when you file a complaint against somebody like that, the bar will make available all of the um, the complainer's information to the person being complained about, including their <laughs> name, address. And so Nick Cade decided really to start going. publishing all of that information oh publicly. My God. <laughs> so like, no. that's the kind of person he is. Yeah, it, yeah. I understand why people. Like, be, if I did something crazy or I got arrested, there'd be a lot of people celebrating for the same reason. Yeah, so I understand it. Yeah. There's gonna be a is lot this the of reason videos. why you play like extra carefully in the court of public opinion and what you do just because you don't want to give any hater aka Hassan any ammunition against him. you think i play he, carefully he in court of public opinion well, jesus I, oh my no, god I he's burned every bridge he's made i gotta tweet more n-words now jesus hold on no, my I god think, listen i think you tactfully like take care okay i think you're like me where it's like in the sense that if you know you can't convince somebody then f- it what is the point right like why even bother like just yeah. you might as well you shouldn't think that way still though. Be that's, just, that's a weak when i'm doing that when i say things like that that's me in my weakest moments <laughs> you should you should always be trying hard but i don't know bro that's you with your most based moments and that's yeah, what we okay. need to be thanks thinkers. that's what the internet is nowadays like literally a couple days ago me and this one like account the uh, in what is it ingestive shadows or some shit like that in praise like, of shadows guy. yeah wait wait caleb what was his name in praise of shadows yeah, That's so this, amazing. like, horror YouTube guy, I don't know if you've seen this on the internet, but, like, so this guy's whole history is, like, covering, like, online uh, horror videos and shit like that, and maybe in, like, an alternate universe, I probably would have watched these videos if they showed up in my recommended more, mm-hmm. but, like, anyways, he makes this video where he's, like, shitting on, like, Wendigo, three like, hour donut operator, video. brand, yeah, three hour something long video, and, like, towards the tail end of it, it is, like, the worst most bad faith interpretations of anything anybody can do like look if you dislike me sure fine it is what it is but at least like if you're going to critique somebody put in like the five minutes of research for it so anyways he goes on brandon buckingham and like Uh-oh. he literally quotes sneeko oh, <laughs> you know how like he uh, calls brandon, brandon and- buckingham a um he, he doesn't even say like YouTuber. alleged or anything he says a a someone who has made threats like, okay yeah I'm yeah, very familiar just, with that whole, yeah, because I was friends with Sneeko and I kind of am friendly with uh, Brandon now. So, yeah, I'm, I'm familiar with both sides of that. Yeah, so he makes this, like, it doesn't even start the alleged stuff. Like, he just goes into it. And it's like, it takes five minutes of research to realize everything you said in there was wrong. Mm-hmm. And then he goes up to, like, me and Oompa and it's like, we have been caught defending or, like, in support of a trafficker Andrew Tate. Like, he just goes on and it's like, actual human trafficker, right? Now, here's my... Here's where it is. We've all like researched the Andrew Tate stuff. I think all of us pretty extensively. Um, and by research, I mean like actually look into his various cases and whatnot. Mm-hmm. And I don't like Andrew Tate, right? Like I have my own like issues with him. Like reading through his cases, he seems like the absolute biggest scumbag ever. But that's still, you, you, it's still like you can't just say somebody is an actual trafficker unless there's a proper actual conviction of it, right? You know, like you, that, I, that's just like court of law in general it's just like actual like practices like even if you're even if you're like the most wannabe journalist in the world that's it's a standard i think everyone should hold uh to the everyone should hold right like do, is yeah, there anybody you should be in disagreement? careful about yeah how you how you present like the strength of evidence against people or where the current like yeah where, where the current like investigation is at or whatever sure yeah that's fair. Yeah, and it's like it's like if if no like and this is one of the things where it's like uh I've watched you discuss it in regards to you know the H3 podcast Hassan like many of the political commentators that talk about Andrew Tate where it's like you're making very heavy actual claims but nothing's actually been set in stone because my thing is it could always be egg in my face there could be a very good chance mm-hmm. you know that a month from now or like a year from now when these cases are all settled Maybe the guy is innocent, right? Maybe things come out where he might actually be innocent, right? Like that could be a case. And then all of a sudden you've basically given this man 
all carte blanche to go after you guys for whatever defamation suits they want or, or something as unlikely as any of these things might end up being mm -hmm. why open yourself up there and it's also just again you know irresponsible to do so this guy goes on at us and it's it's funny because like he'll mention that we've defended him like my my whole take with andrew is like instead of deplatforming somebody i think it's better to challenge uh, opinion right or, ch or debate somebody in in public and shame them right it's what we did with like sneeko even right like sneeko starts bringing well, he was up also banned so well he's banned mm. but for the time that he wasn't we decided to shame him and i think we all did a pretty good job right like the internet collectively like made fun of this guy for his stupid thoughts uh and his uh beliefs and for the most part i think everyone looks at him as kind of a joke and yeah everyone's gonna have that fringe community that sticks around no matter what right like they're gonna have like a fan base at the end of the day but the, all the information that makes fun of you is still easily accessible that's what your name is and like seo and every form of search and i think ultimately that does more actual damage to these people's brands in the long term rather than just shutting them up and pretending they don't exist because they just go to like other platforms like rumble kick and then just restart and then pretend that they're in this bullshit matrix and they're getting attacked mm -hmm. they play victim <laughs> when in reality it's not even the case yeah. he did his stream yeah. last week where he uh he would you know go on these omegle dates or whatever where he'd boot up the omegle thing and uh, some random mm -hmm. girl would pop up on the other side and he would try his best to hit on her in the creepiest way possible um and what? he's like you know his first question is always hey how old are you and she's like you know 16 and he's like oh almost there anyway you ever heard of zionism <laughs> it's, like, <laughs> it's like it's crazy man king rose hell yeah dude 100 percent perfect perfect shit right there and then <laughs> i can't believe he's actually doing that is it that stupid app or it's I think it's I know what you're talking about. Yeah. yeah 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 i think i know exactly what you're talking about i cannot believe that's what sneako's up to now i thought he was like out there doing his a uh, one minute podcast or whatever with like random people on the street, you know, Steven Crowder style did not know that's what he was up to. Yeah. I think he still wild. does that too, but yeah, I mean, he's obviously he's pretty hungry to try to find content to do. Yeah. Yeah. But like, the, the, and these are the kind of people, like if you just keep making fun of him, it's like, I feel like in the public opinion, it's bad. One of the clips I saw recently was like between you and Hassan, where it was like the value of debate, mm -hmm. you know, the idea of like people who treat it as entertainment. And I kind of see where he's coming from. Like, obviously a lot of people just love watching debate for the entertainment factor of it. Like just people going at each other's throats, but the whole idea of discounting because the entire world, in my opinion, is kind of built on debating an idea. It's like, I kind of look at it like an evolution, right? Like you can have one idea in the public and it's like over time, as you debate it, as you argue the value of it, that idea dies or it strengthens. So you refine depending on your how points, well, you know. Yeah, depending on how well you refine and discuss these points. To completely like, I, I feel like the whole idea of like getting rid of debate or getting rid of any form of commentary or like trying to like, I guess, jest on it. I, I, I feel like that's the most unhealthy thing to have. And I don't know, that's where this whole like Andrew Tate, like deplatforming defense kind of comes into. I can see like the understanding of deplatforming. Like if you want to get rid of somebody that's like promoting like actual violence or whatever, right? That makes sense. Mm -hmm. But like somebody that just has a shitty idea should be countered in the public. And that's just what it should say. Yeah, to. but also like if, if you want to look at this from a productive perspective, I imagine, look, debating is probably not going to change a huge amount of people's minds. But you know what will change? Less people's minds? Going to someone that you already know as either a right-wing guy or a left-wing guy where they will always spout the same parroted opinions that they uh, that their group says, that's not going to change anybody's mind at all. Whoever is subscribing to Hassan wants Hassan's opinions, and whoever subscribes to Ben Shapiro wants Ben Shapiro's opinions, you know? Yeah, I mean, I, I think know. I think the issue is that um, like there are a lot of problems with I guess debate, but there are pro all the problems that people talk about with debate are problems with literally everything having to do with political anything. Uh, people say things like, "Oh, people don't debate in good faith." They're like, "Yeah, okay, well, there are activists that go to protests that don't really know what they're protesting for, right? Or they're just there because their friends are there, or they're because it's the popular thing." Or people say like, "Nobody's changing their minds," and I mean, I don't know how many people's minds are being changed by, um, yeah, by by literally any form of activism or by any politician giving a speech or by uh, you know anybody. Posting a video essay or by, like all of these problems that they, they talk about relating to debating are endemic to anything that involves trying to change people's minds um i agree that like a, i guess maybe debate because it's a one on one and like two people are arguing different points some people might have an elevated idea of debate that like well when these two people debate somebody at the end of the debate is going to change their mind and be you know agreeing with the other person and that obviously doesn't happen but 
I mean, same thing with video essays too. People put out video essays and a lot of people, I mean, you guys all know, right? People put out a video essay and somebody just shit on that all day for all the same stupid reasons. Somebody might disagree with somebody in a conversation. So you know, I don't know. I, I don't care if people think that um, if people don't like debating or people, you know, don't enjoy it or they don't get much from it, that's fine. I just, when people write it off, the reason why they write it off almost every single time it's because is they be suck at it. Yeah. It's because they're either really, really, really bad at it or mm -hmm. it's because, um, no, it's just because of that. Just because they're really, okay. really bad at it. And they just, they don't see themselves <laughs> or their ideas are like indefensible. And I, and I see this because almost every person I talk to, I don't know if you, I don't know how much you follow this, but I did a, um, kind of like a panel debate thing, uh, against five or whatever people a few days ago. And it was funny because at the beginning, I'm like, yeah, you know, people say that debates aren't good because of whatever reasons. Um, but I think it's usually because people are bad at debates or they don't want to defend their ideas. And then the other people all wheel out the same criticisms where they're like, well, actually it's because people that debate, they do, they're just engaging in rhetoric. Um, and they don't actually, um, they, they don't, you know, they don't actually get, engage in good factual analysis and it's all just like trying to dunk on people. And it's like, that's so interesting because that's like, that's the thing that I hear repeated a lot. Rhetoric is my weakest point. Okay. I'm like, when I do debates in my perfect world, we would all sit around with, you know, train sets being the most autistic people ever like oh you think that covid vaccines do this like well what did this study say well, what did this study say oh and that's that's how i like to think okay i just like to think in like discrete little autistic things um because that's what i that's 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 how my brain works for a lot of people people like stories and narratives things that tie together collections of facts there's a way more human approach to things and that's my weakest point um so people will say things like oh yeah you just do rhetoric and it's like no that's that's the thing that i'm working on the most i have to put so much effort in that and then whenever these people debate me or, or argue against me about debate i guess they are the ones that always engage in the craziest ad homming like rhetorical tricks or whatever uh, where they're like calling me names they're looking for dunks and then they're just like you know, like saying like random things to try to rhetorically posture. Like look at Hassan is a great example of this. He'll say things like debate are bad, Destiny's just good at rhetoric. But if you watch Hassan, all he does is grandstand and soapbox. Like what the, yeah. Sorry, that was a big ol'. I mean, I mean, the the thing, and okay, like, here's my thing with like Hassan or whatever. It's like watching his like content or really, and this goes to like anybody that covers it. I don't think that these people are intellectually weak. I think they understand what they're talking about. I do, however, get really weirded out like i don't know if you guys watch the willie mack video on like the oh, song or whatever, right yep. but uh the way that he covers certain topics right where it's like first off i want to just start off by saying i hate it when like anybody in this like camp calls themselves a reporter right i don't think anybody in the political sphere is a reporter that shit is you're more regurgitators right like it is what i would say that in a, in 99 of the cases me umpaville are doing more research than political commentators because you actually go <laughs> I do okay let me explain something to you i've seen political guys like look at one tweet as evidence of something right we True. don't dude if we bro if we go into one topic and bring one tweet as evidence we would be we would be in the middle of like riyadh with our heads being chopped off okay Jesus. in our communities that's how it works that's why we have to bring in actual facts the the whole keffels thing for instance right which like it's why i'm glad actually like we started off with destiny saying you to me because i do deserve the you on that because a lot of the stuff that we did research a chunk of it was from you it was stuff that was out two years ago mm -hmm. we went above and beyond like i went into the neo-nazi compound allegedly that is kiwi farms to source out archive links yeah. to use in that video right mm -hmm. and it's like it's insane because like you get these actual like quote-unquote journalist reporters that the information's been out there for two plus years yeah you haven't jumped in and researched but yet it takes a like fat chubby indian gamer to like sit on you just not play siege for like two hours and research the <laughs> kettle's topic yeah and that does more and like brings out retractions that's the insane part about it so yeah. when i watch like some of these I guess, quote unquote, reporters, and you're not reporting, you're sitting there on like the internet live streaming, looking through Twitter or Reddit or whatever, for one source, really, mm -hmm. you pick out exactly what satiates your worldview, you propagate that, and there's no pushback. Like, even in these communities, it's like, even though this, the Willie Mac video is out there, it gets written off like drama. And I'm like, how is that drama? Like, the guy actually researched, went to every angle, dug out the actual story, and now you're going to write that off like it's petty school drama. Like, this is why I hate this team sports mentality. Because mm -hmm. there's no objectivity anymore, right? Like, I was, like, on this podcast alone, we've had people from every spectrum. We've had Destiny. We've had Asan on. We've had, um, uh, we've had, uh, I'm trying to find the exact Predator opposite poachers. of you guys. 
Well, Alex Rosen, it, it's so insane how even with Alex Rosen, like before, that's a separate point. I'm going to remember that. But we've had Count Dankula, right? Like okay. exact opposite ends. Mm-hmm. We've had like actual solid discussions. We had solid, like it's never been an argumentative thing, right? Like we, in a, in a real world scenario, if we sat down, we could probably find a million things we disagree with each other on. But it's like trying to be objective, trying to be realistic, trying to be like normal level headed is just so far out of scope for a lot of these people because they look at their entire worldview. And for them, it's all a team sport. For them, it's all about trying to be right and getting a dunk on somebody. So that's, yeah. I don't know, it's a long time coming. Yeah, like I'll that, see that, people... Uh, or go, yeah, go for it. I was going to say real quick on that. I, like, I'll see people, like, they do their research or they do whatever the f- um, and, and I'll look and it'll be like a 10 minute video based on two tweets. And I don't know if you looked at my manifesto or whatever, and there are people that do more research than I do, but like, and every paragraph I'm writing, there's like six different like links to source and verify every single thing I'm saying. Like if I'm saying that like Keffel's tweeted, you know, three days ago, there's going to be a link to like Keffel's birth certificate, like the founding of Twitter as a company, and then a link and an archive to the mm-hmm. tweet itself. And then other people will be like, oh, Destiny, by the way, he's a file nazi and like their source on that is like 12 years ago in starcraft 2 i built buildings that might have taken on the shape of a swastika or whatever it was just like the most random shit and people build an entire story of that it's like you guys don't do any homework or research or anything because like you said people don't actually care about the actual truth of the story at the end of the day they're just trying to like further their own political uh, their political or social beliefs basically yeah yeah and and like the thing about it too is like what aggravates me is like i always openly brazenly say like i'm a idiot I'm, I'm a stupid individual like i really am like i'm not a smart guy like my background is engineering furthest thing away from like anything in politics or any of the situation so when i'm like doing any work in this it always drives me insane because it's like why am i putting in more effort than like an actual journalist or like somebody whose field of expertise this is yeah especially on like the online is like content creation it's like i think the thing that wilds me out is like covering this it's like getting labeled like oh you're into like the drama side of things i'm like in what world is a financial like kerfuffle like actually a drama at that point right in what world is like lying for two years and painting a false narrative and like you know promoting illegal ddos attacks attacks like piece of drama like this is being objective and factual is like frowned upon in today's day and age i guess you could say at least on the internet right Mm -hmm. but i don't know that's just it's a it's a aggravating point even with like the alex rosen shit like this one bread tube guy right that we were talking about was like shitting on (laughs) alex rosen so he's the um, you know who Alex Rosen is? The Predator like approachers? I feel like I've seen the name. The tall guy. The tall, tall guy. The fat beard. dude, big beard. He was the EDP guy, the guy who like stung mm-hmm. EDP, you remember? Okay, okay. Yeah, but now he so has like, a, he actually has like hundreds of arrests. Uh, as opposed to yeah. that one botched one that he's known for, he has actually hundreds of arrested files because of his direct uh contributions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So he's like a guy that's very obviously edgy. Like if I had to describe him, it's like, yeah, he's a four chainer at heart you know yeah like let's not f- around but he's actually stopped real predators and shit right like actually worked with the Him law and Vitaly, and I'm bro. About, like, bro okay no no, let's, no 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 big difference from the <laughs> <laughs> i mean hey vitaly has probably stopped predators from actually acting because i would imagine getting flashbanged <laughs> probably might prevent you from doing shit in the future i don't know but like He's out there and like these kind of like weird red tuber guys are like on the side of the predators. Like, see how these guys laugh at predators being taken down or like, you know, like donut operator made like a shooting breakdown on the predator. And it's like the shadow guy. How am I supposed shadow to feel bad? face? He just goes up there and he said the reason why donut operator is bad, because as you can see, he's smiling in the thumbnail where hell was ruthlessly executed by a brutal malicious cop and it's like he was he was a it's one of those things where it's like even like a predator it's like i don't understand what like it's so hard for anybody to sit down and sympathize with you and like that's the guy on the end you know dude what's going on i mean yeah it's kids and it's like yeah it's the probably part of the worst things you can ever do in society so that makes sense yeah up there like killing puppies yeah it's it's always just like it always just comes down to at least in these i feel like a lot of it is just contrarians like i I don't even want to say like these are like political guys because i had like a i mean everyone i think has a bit of a contrarian phase at some point in their life you know whether you're like a teenager or something you always want to be right you always feel like you know the world or whatever so it's like Mm -hmm. contrarian point hits and then it's like I feel like for a lot of these people debating or like making these video essays in contrast is 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 derived from that. Not ne- not necessarily a belief. It's just like I need to be competitive. I need to win because I've always had this thing. I'm like, there are just some things we should probably all be in agreement of in society, right? Like, 
Yeah. I don't know. There, there's just some things that I feel like <laughs> debating them is such a pointless endeavor where it's like, should yeah, but... we really be in disagreement against like, you know, predators or something yeah, of that nature? I, I actually, know. I disagree with part of your thesis. Uh, and I do think it has to do with politics that they would go so crazy. I, I don't think it's any specific okay. politics, but I think that mm -hmm. politics specifically is so divisive that if you're on one side and they're on the other side, you're going to need – you would rather be – it's like enemy of my enemy is my friend. And you will ally yourself with like actual predators to go up against this one guy who doesn't share your political beliefs. And um, that's when you lose the plot. And that's when you <laughs> lose the plot. That's when it's like, brother, get help. Touch grass. Yeah. I will say, though, something that people should keep in mind is that there are some really mature 12 year old. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, something that you that people <laughs> should keep in mind. Sneak in here for a second. <laughs> no. Some things that people should keep in mind is some people will say things like, well, I think this is beyond debating or this shouldn't be argued or whatever. I think it is good, actually, to revisit fundamental topics a lot or maybe not a lot, but every now and then, because there are a lot of people that forget, like, well, why is this particular thing bad? And they kind of take it for granted. Um, I had mm. that moment with. Um, I had that moment with Sneeko, I actually think a month or so ago, we were arguing something. Uh, he wanted to come on and like basically light up XQC because XQC doesn't know everything about the Quran or some bullshit. And I asked Sneeko, oh, right. I was like, oh, like, um, obviously I'm going to troll the fuck out of him because he's here trying to bully XQC. I'm going to bully Sneeko because why would I miss an opportunity to bully the fuck out of Sneeko? And I asked him something about like, um, what do you think the age of consent should be? And because obviously he's on his like Muslim grift now. And so he doesn't, he can't give like an actual answer to that. Um, mm -hmm. And at some point I think I asked him point blank. I'm like, oh, why is it wrong to the child? And his response was, um, because it's a, because the Quran says so or whatever. God says <laughs> I'm like, so. I'm like, that's Bro, really, he, that's the only reason why you think it's wrong. So um, I, I, I yeah. saw that clip. I, the reason why I was a little mad is because I don't think God ever says in any Quran or anything that you can't have with kids. That's not there. So when he says God no, says so, the case, yeah. that's his excuse because God never said so. Well, then, that, well, that's the thing with like anybody in that grift camp, right? It's like, especially like the islamic grift stuff it's like it's just like these new guys that jump in mm -hmm. i feel like it's just like they're they're picking like the muslim art because it's probably like historically the one religion that's like kind of a little more like traditional in the sense or at least they've kept most of their traditional beliefs but it's like they stick their heads in that and they're 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 it's it's being intellectually like dishonest you know like i feel like every single person that we cover here or we talk about in that camp mm -hmm. No matter who, Tate or even Sneeko, it's like they're smart enough to know what they say is bullshit, but like that's just part of the grift, right? It's yeah. like, you know. Yeah, but it's good for normal people too, because a lot of people have just really bad understandings of everything. I think because we took it off for granted so long. Another really good example is that Kate, Kate or whatever, what the f was the name of that girl and the one YouTuber guy on the couch, Dreams Friend. You guys know who I'm talking oh, about. Katie, Katie Buzz and George. Katie Buzz, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. A lot of people have a really hard time verbalizing like, well, what is actually wrong about a particular thing or what's okay about a thing or like, mm -hmm. why is an age gap bad or what? Like people just don't know the answer to any of these questions because everybody just kind of like slaps each other's wrists on Twitter over it. And then nobody actually knows any of the arguments. And then when like these kind of edge cases show up, it's like, oh, well, I don't know why this particular thing is bad. I think it's not good because yeah. of an age gap, but I don't know actually why an age gap is even bad, or I don't know why him being a YouTuber is bad. And like, yeah, that's I don't know. That's why you see so many buzzwords constantly being used. It's like, oh, he was love bombing. Oh, that's a that's a form of abuse right there. And it's like, yeah. do you know what you just said? Like, yeah, dude. I I mean, I've had a I mean, like, I, I've had a reason one where it's like Jen was considered like a. I mean, I guess she's like slandered as like a neo Nazi these days for like being in an interracial relationship. Bro, I've had the most insane levels of shit tossed at me. I found out like the other week, as soon as I released the Keppel stuff, mm -hmm. that it was like, I'm actually Aryan. Like, Indian people are actually like the OG Aryans. Like, Destiny, you may not be aware of this, but I am actually the token Jewish friend to protect Mudahar from getting canceled. Well, I mean, Dude. with the Israeli shit, I don't know if having a token Jewish friend is going to help anymore. You might whoa, be hurting whoa, the cause. Whoa, you, you might be hurting the cause more than anything else. It's a different so. thing. Haven't you heard that? Uh huh. They say that. They do. That's what they say, say right before yeah, they say Just they like hate on Jews. Fox News, when they would say, when we say thugs <laughs> and criminals, we're not talking about black people. <laughs> no, okay. God, we just wish these guys would pull bro, their pants Fox up a little News bit. Fox News is yeah. entertainment, bro. Come on now. You can't be treating it as a. But you didn't hear that Frogan had a Zionist therapist? Didn't hear that? Oh god, bro! That was a, that was by far like we need to have like a f segment at some point where it's like the dumbest takes of two thousand or whatever the f mm -hmm. year we're in because, bro, like literally it just twenty twenty not even half the year has passed and I've seen the stupidest shit on the internet. Like Ludwig donates to a f cause, and like I have to hear that he's like some cracker or whatever. The f 
<laughs> the next second, I'm like, dude, you can't even donate money and like appease a group of people on the internet. Like you can't even do the right thing and actually help people out. You know, like people that need money for medical reasons or whatever. It's like, you still have to find a way to dunk money. Like I remember donating to like any, like a specific charity. I'm not even going to go into it. And it's like, well, Moody, you still don't care. You're still not tweeting out about it. I'm like, dude, again, I'm like a fat Indian guy on the internet. Me tweeting about a cause is going to change shit. Mm-hmm. I will, however, donate money if I feel the cause is just. And that's pretty much where the extent of it goes into. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, no. I don't know. With like, with that Frogan chick specifically though, man, she is like a f- actual, like anytime I see her on the internet, I want to like bleach my goddamn brain because it's just reading whatever she write it's like no thought no actual anything goes in like not not a brain cell is rubbed between each other when anything she tweets it's insane mm-hmm. yeah, it's like, she is easily one of the most disgusting people you know, online it's actually the super fact gross. That she was she got the rising star award two years in a row is my favorite thing well i it's mean like, at this point she's probably gonna get a for third two years. time at this point jesus uh, christ yeah uh, pretty dumb <laughs> pretty stupid yeah no it's rough and then she she beefed with our boy tectone yo why have we had every controversial is it we, our we, fault is it our fault I, are we the black plague last week we had Wendy Goon, and now he got canceled i feel What's like we are on? to an extent like you know but i don't know i mean like i think it's just the internet kind of in general it's like i don't think it's us it's just like every week there's always like a new little like beef there's always like just some new thing that pisses somebody off and then it gets replaced in like 20 minutes with some other bullshit no. <laughs> it's like you know it's part of the internet it's like you know you just you'll have like cycles of actual like stupidity and, and then uh, mr you know, borelli tweeted the n-word and all was safe and balanced once again bro how many times did that guy up your name in that goddamn debate dude i must have like i feel like i want to watch that norm finkelstein debate and just have like a notepad and pen and paper and just write down every new mute permutation of your name that gets tossed in Mr. That, was like, really... that was actually the one debate that's a perfect example of why debate never changes anybody anybody's <laughs> mind because i feel like when i looked at the comments to that debate i'm like oh wow i'm like the only one that watched it because apparently everyone else here just has like their team already picked yeah out. but it's like it's it's perfect it's perfect for another reason too because it shows you that like all the people that complain about how you know debate pervertry and how bad debate is are all the ones cheering on norm for his like you know com- completely childish behavior the entire time you know um like, it's where, like you would imagine people he'll cheer on trump when he give, gives people funny nicknames yeah, right. Yeah, he called yeah. him Sleepy Joe, and everyone was like, "Oh, destroyed! It's over. The left wing is annihilated." Oh, pretty dumb, bro. Trump is just funny as <laughs> dude. He is. <laughs> he is funny, nope. but yeah. he, is, he is funny. I mean, hey, he's funny, but the other guy we have on our side is just passed the f- out most of them, so yeah. there's no winning there. What do you mean, man? Like, uh, you live in Canada, well, bro. <laughs> Bro, what is, bro, oh, you're one of those. Oh, you're I, one of those. Listen, I have people I'm who are British right calling now. in saying like, "Yeah, this is why we need to do blah blah blah." I'm like we? No, okay. <laughs> I, I actually have like a, this is my this is my take over here. I think I should have more voting than ten Americans. <laughs> I think, you I think should voting, have more voting rights. You get more votes Native depending Americans. on how much education you have. What do you think? No, no, not just education. No, I get more voting rights than the average American because I pay more than the average American in taxes to the IRS. I feel like I should Dude. absolutely be allowed to. I, I agree. I feel like you, have, <laughs> you, you have Aryan <laughs> privilege. Like, oh. no, no, like anytime on the internet, people are like, stay in your lane, Canadian. I'm like, get the f- out of here, bro. You know, <laughs> my, you know the f- check that I have to write to the Internal Revenue Service? I deserve more rights than a f- than, than, than your entire township. That's the thing that drives me insane, dude. Like, we were looking at, like, Jen or whatever, because, like, moving to Canada or whatever. It's mm-hmm. like, you know what the most insane part about being an American is, bro? You guys are, like, being pimped out by your country everywhere you go. You could live in another part of the world, and you'll have to declare your income to the United States government True. and still pay a level of money on dude, it. Dude, I'm right? a dual, I'm a dual citizen. I have to declare my taxes. I don't I don't live in America. I've never lived in America. And I have to declare my yeah. taxes every year. It's so Bro, frustrating. And, and what's don't so be a YouTuber about then. America is like... It has nothing no, to do with that. No, no, it doesn't matter. <laughs> that's where YouTube is American. based. No, that's not no, no, no. why. Because you, anyone no, no. that is an American citizen has to file taxes in America, period, having nothing to do with where they live or anything. In Canada, it's based on residency. In America, it's based on citizenship. So if you live in Canada, you have to do Canadian taxes because you're a resident, and you have to do American taxes because you're a citizen. 
To be fair, like, I think for America, I think there's a there's an income cutoff where you have to report it. But if you make under like 130k, I don't think you have to pay dual taxes. But oh, it is yeah, really yeah, unique, yeah. Broke. great solution. Yeah. For yeah. It depends on the it, de- it depends mostly on like the treaties that a country has. But no, no, no. What I mean is like Oompa, it's like Caleb. It's like if you're if if you if you get a, if you leave the United States and you come to Canada, right? And like you work in my Canadian company and I pay you like two hundred thousand dollars a year Canadian. Mm-hmm. You only worked in my company in Canada. You still have to report that income and pay yeah. a portion of it to the United States. You know, you never had anything. That money never touched the U.S. or anything. But that's like, just that, that's them. just normal though. I mean, it, you even have to pay. You have to like if state wise. Like if there if states have income tax, you have to like you have to spend a certain amount of time. Like in states, that's like just normal. Wait, you you're telling me like if I'm if let's say I'm a Californian resident, and I moved to Texas, I still have to pay California money even unless if I you live spend, and reside in Texas. If you actually can prove your residency in Texas, you do not. So the way that it works in the United States is if you live in one state and you work in another. In the United States, basically every state has it so that you need to pay taxes in the state that you work. But obviously every state's going to want to keep track of the money you make because they don't want you to make money and not pay taxes on it. So like let's say you work in California um and you live in like Arizona or whatever, what you is Arizona an income tax state? I think it is. Um, I think it is, yeah. Or up in or up in Oregon, right? What happens is is what you'll do is you'll file two tax returns. You file a tax you file two state tax returns. You file a state tax return for California because you earned your money there, and then you have to pay them money there. But then you'll also file a separate state tax return in Oregon. But you'll tell Oregon, like, hey, listen, I earned, you know, $120,000, but look, I paid taxes in California. So that income you can't tax because you can't double tax me because I I just because I live in uh, one state and I work in another one, yeah. A lot of people think it is double tax, but it shouldn't be unless somebody's your taxes up really yeah, exactly. hardcore. Yeah, because yeah. you have to take like proper precautions to not nexus yourself. Like there's a lot of ways around being nexused. Well, mm-hmm. the point is, okay, America. like before anybody like jumps into even the Canadian, to go back to the original point here, I think as a <laughs> Canadian, I have more voting rights than the average American. Gotcha. I deserve it. I 100% <laughs> do. Like that, here's the f- part about it. Okay, like, I kind of, I really did think about this. Like I had this running in my head. You know how we have like separation of church and state, you know, like we don't tax, we don't tax churches and shit. Right. And that's why they're not allowed in the, in the political system from my understanding. Right. In the I, mo- I don't in think that's cases. the trade off. Is it? I thought the, no, the separation they- of church and state was that uh, America will dictate its rules and laws, not based on faith, but based on, I don't know. Logic yeah, and we don't we, exactly. And that's why we don't tax the money. They have, we don't take any of their money so they have no say in the state or anything right we we let them keep their cash but you're going to take money from my canadian ass operating in your country mind you uh, but you're going to take a fair share you're going to take more than a fair share because i've seen my taxes i'm not i'm not jumping into the board of scientology i don't want to be the next why are you why are you operating in america to make good money but the point is why not pay taxes (laughs) here No, no, I'm, no, but I pay taxes. But here's the other thing. I'm providing more opportunity in business. Should I not have like some voting rights? Should I not have at least federal voting rights? I'm not even saying- well, I don't think bi- voting states. rights are really given based on like money and, and uh, business and you know that kind of stuff. It's usually just like people, individuals make up- Yeah, but it's, if you're going to let the average scumbag on Twitter vote about policy, what about the guy making money in your country? Come on now. I don't know. I think I like you, it the you other make way a good better. argument. <laughs> no, what the f- what the f- So hold on. My money is good enough to f- take. You're good enough to f- me every year. The IRS is going to have to f- my ass every mm-hmm. quarter and I don't get to f- say it all. I don't know. The problem no, is there's saying- like we we there should be like an American maxim relating to granting additional rights to Canadians mm-hmm. which should always mm-hmm. be reduced. So you have to Just overcome the Just take Canada hurdle over, of, bro. Just take of, it over. How no, about how about you exit Canada? Canada. Canadians, give them Voting rights. Okay. How about you exit Bro, Canada and pay pay fifty percent of all the money you've ever made in your entire life mm-hmm. to come to America? Then better, you can vote. I got a better idea. I got a better. Just annex us. Just take us, please. <laughs> okay. You got all this fuck. Fifty no, first right, state. Just take Canada. No. I know a few guys. We can get no, this done. Think, think, think about it. Like think about it. It's such a good thing if the United States takes over Canada. You get all this land. And what do you mean, mm-hmm. like absorb Canadians, bro? We are less than the state of California. You get basically. You, you're just taking an extra state, but think about you all get the another land you Alaska, get. okay? You That's get it. all the natural resources, okay? Our life gets better because we don't have shitty Canadian leadership anymore. We have obviously shitty American leadership. Dude, but I would think we, we'd American have leadership over cars, Canadians, not on horses. Think about it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We don't. We, our FBI doesn't have to be riding horseback through the 
city anymore. We cannot be an embarrassment. So it's a net good. You get shit, we get shit. I think an annexation of Canada is the greatest thing to ever happen. Dude, yeah, I'm but the problem sovereign. is when your if people come here, they vote. Quebec, they would. We'd have to start doing land acknowledgements for our... Hey, listen, we don't have time for all that shit. I'm sorry. You guys have to keep your Canadian shit up there. <laughs> We're going to do our American oh, shit so, down here. So, but, but see, that's the problem. If you're not going to take us over, why does your policy affect us so much? You know, every time an American election season happens, a lot of the fallback also falls onto us, okay? Like, we have to deal with... We are basically an American state without any acknowledgement Damn. of being an American listen, state. Listen, if you feel bad about that, imagine how people in the Middle East that get bombed by us feel. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, it doesn't matter about the whole yeah. uh, America sorry. affects the whole world. That's right. We yeah, do that, affect that the whole world. All right. That is when the heart retracts the us. That that is ex that's when he decides that. I, dude, no, I no, just no. think I just think an annexation of Canada is better because, like, I was looking into the whole exit taxes with like fucking, with like Texas, right? And it's like, yeah, Caleb's not fucking around. Okay, fifty percent of the money just goes to the Canadians for no yeah. reason other than a fuck you for leaving the country. It's just like, a you. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. I, I think most of, like here's the thing. Look, and people who say taxation is theft, I'm not one of those people because it's like I went to a public school. I went to like I use a lot of public shit. Okay, I'm not going to say that it's bad. It, it obviously has a purpose, but the amount of dicking me around or like anybody that hasn't been assessed properly. I feel like in the U.S., it's like anytime I talk about this shit, it just drives me insane. I'm like Twitter when somebody's like, "Stay in your lane, Canuck," and I'm like, "What do you mean? I should have more rights than an American, bro." Like, what the <laughs> Most of my shit is here. Jesus Christ. I don't know. I sympathize a little bit. Yeah. It's kind of like when Trump will I'll be arguing tax policy with some dude that's making like 27,000 a year talking about how great the Trump tax cuts are. And it's like, okay, dude, if that's, what we, <laughs> that's really when I argue. Yeah. I mean, like <laughs> this shit ain't helping you, buddy. Like I'm saving more in taxes on, on these tax cuts than you literally gross in a year. But I mean, if you think this is better for the country, I guess knock yourself out. Yeah, people are people are bad at representing yeah. their interests or. Yeah, but you're never you're never going to win with people like that, dude. It's like once they're so ingrained in that line of thought it's like you can bring up all the it's like what we discussed you can bring up all the facts and objectivity and like nobody will want to like understand or take your side for it yeah the real scary no. thing i don't know how much you guys follow u.s supreme court shit to get very political um my god so trump has a case uh, right now that's being argued or was being argued in front of the supreme court on whether or not the president of the united states should have unlimited criminal immunity I meaning he can never be charged <gasps> with a crime in criminal court what? that's crazy and, um, yeah so it's a really big case that was argued uh, I think a couple By weeks Nick ago. Nick Ricada himself. Yeah, no. Um, but there's a, we have a Supreme Court justice, Sotomayor, who was giving a speech in front of an assembly of Harvard students, uh, I think a few, uh, two or three days ago. And she was talking about how, like, uh, yeah, some decisions are really tough. And there are days where I close my door and I cry in my office because of how tough the decisions are. And, you know, we might be coming up to some of those. And now people are starting to wonder if that is like a, if that's some kind of like foreboding or foreshadowing of of Trump winning that immunity case to where the Supreme Court's coming going to come out and say this the president of the United States is actually infinitely immune from criminal charges so that's a huge thing that we've got coming up on the horizon in the, wait, on the wait, US. Wait, wait, I thought I thought the saying. president was pretty immune for the most part, right? Like Absolutely not. No. Presidents just don't typically commit crimes like that people might think that there's like an understanding there um, but there are good reasons to, to argue that presidents have not operated in a way that they would assume they're immune from crimes and the biggest example of that would be ford's pardoning of nixon when ford came into office because the question would be why the f are you pardoning nixon if he's if he was a president you can never charge him with a crime right but nobody's really thought that before this is a very new argument now that basically is coming up with donald trump but the the weird thing is that like the president could literally order an assassination of a political rival then and never be held criminally liable because I, I guess that's what trump's lawyers are trying to argue and that's not an exaggeration that's literally what they're trying to argue it's an extremely bizarre case so yeah but so is it like is it when you're president like your criminal record just gets kind of like delayed or something or like no, put on hold or some shit no not really you just typically you presidents aren't like committing crimes People, people will say things like war crimes mm. or whatever, but like generally these are actions like as president of the United States where you're doing like military mm -hmm. stuff. Like it's, it's usually more complicated than that, but um, it usually so he just him. wants to basically get away with like a murder if he was like ever liable for it. Maybe. I mean, the, but, but could... the argument is that, I mean, if he wins the case then every single charge essentially, I think has to be dropped against him because he can't be criminally charged with anything. He, if he, he wins the case and Biden pulls out a gun and shoots him in the head. Crazy, Bro, that's like, crazy that's some, upset. That's some like Vladimir Putin kind of shit bro what the um, that's crazy i didn't i didn't know that was going on but then yeah. again i don't really see that much talked about i only see like internet drama between like yeah. idiots political commentators and shit oh
but yeah, other than like, other than, other than all this stuff, it's like, what's next for, for the destiny arc? What's uh, what are you, what are you coming up with? Cause I noticed that you do like a lot of canvassing, like you actually go out of your way. You've launched your own like podcast with like other people, the bridges. And it's like, you're actually doing more work outside of YouTube than I think most of the other people in this camp. Mm-hmm. So it's like, what is next really? Like, how do you kind of manage all that too? <laughs> That's the other big thing that I kind of wanted to come into. Cause it's like, it really feels like you're a one man show. Well, you're doing like a lot of a lot of shit and you're managing it pretty well. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I will say starting Vivance seven months ago has definitely helped me be more focused on things. Uh, on ironic drugs. Um, well, yeah, well, unironically, like uh, getting an actual ADHD <laughs> diagnosis and getting medication for it has completely and totally mm-hmm. changed my life. I am actually so upset that um, like six years ago, my son had issues in school. Some big issues relating to ADHD. And I had a ton of reading because I was like, fuck, I really because prior to me taking this i would never take brain medication it's just such a weird horrible thing for me. i would take medicine for anything um and i went through a lot of readings like okay fuck it you know it's my he's my son i should do what's best for him regardless of my feelings so i got on medication and i'm so upset that it took me like six years to think about it for myself because i'm like jesus christ um yeah it's made a huge difference um that being said yeah i don't know if you have this thing where you when you this is this applies to all of you when you do stuff online when you really when you're a small business owner period there's always an infinite amount of things you could be doing and it's really hard sometimes to figure out like am i being a lazy piece of shit right now because i just spent like an hour on reddit or and then i'll think like okay well i kind of worked like 15 hours every single day this week but like am i really working i'm like i'm doing emails i'm like playing around on stream i'm like having fun with it and it's like, could I be doing more? And yeah, I don't know. It's really hard to balance that out of my mind in terms of like, what's when are you working enough and focused enough versus when should you like take a break and chill? Or you know? what's, what's that one saying where it's like, if you love what you do, you never work a day in your life. It sometimes feels like that is more true, like in terms of feeling, because it's like a lot of my day, if I'm on YouTube, like if I'm doing what I like, which is YouTube stuff, mm-hmm. I don't really feel like I'm doing much. Like I feel like I feel like everything I I'm having fun doing what I do, researching, covering things like even that hour on Reddit, right? So mm-hmm. to speak, if it's spent researching, like it doesn't really feel like work. It just feels like, you know, something that I enjoy doing and it is what it is um, versus like working, you know, in my office, like going there it, that genuinely, I wouldn't say like soul crushing. It feels more like work because <laughs> I'm in a new place. I'm doing something that I'm like, you know, it's not ne- like in my mind, I always wish I could be doing more YouTube stuff, more like streaming or something. Yeah. Cause that's what I enjoy more, but it's like, that is work. That is my primary source of income. It feels like more productive there. Um, so I don't know. It's like a bit, a mix of everything. If all I was doing was YouTube full time, I would probably feel like a lazy piece of shit because it would genuinely feel like I'm at home all day doing things that I enjoy. And even if I am like making money out of it, I, I don't think that there's like, I don't know. It's like when you enjoy something, it always feels like your mind is on vacation. It's like infinite summer vacation in your head. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, versus, and maybe it's because like I've ever since I was like 16, doing traditional like a job, like a nine to five has been like a sort of regimented thing in my head. And it's kind of like the one thing I never want to take granted or lose in my life because I really think that structure keeps me more sane and keeps me, I don't me, like you it. Know, you don't like the nine to five? No, I no. I'd rather too. I'd rather run free in the woods naked. I feel like. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I was with you until the, you know until a point. The the thing about the thing about like I mean I would love to run through the woods naked right now and be fucking the <laughs> weather is perfect. But like the thing about it is like if I did YouTube like if I was doing YouTube like twenty four seven like full time, you know like that whole thing when you take like a day off of like streaming you feel like absolute shit yeah you know that, like, that's no. what you think destiny's talking about though like the yeah, idea like that you, when you're self-employed yeah. you could do infinite things and uh mm. at some point if you just waste time you're like i could i could have done another thing at that point but for destiny but that, especially because you, you, you're because like, you're caught into that whole rut of like doing things because because for you it's like if you work a nine to five you know that you work 40 hours a week and your money like it's tied to that location right like that's what it is it doesn't everything mm-hmm. after that is like your free time when you are self-employed, it's like, yeah, everything that you're doing, like if you don't work 24 hours a day, you're just losing money, right? Like that's a very real thing. And it's not like, like that, that is just real. Like yep. you do just lose 
fucking money. Like if you don't work, you know, hundred percent. Any hour spent not doing YouTube work or Twitch work or researching is money. It is time wasted. But aside from money, you know? like uh, I've raided Destiny a couple times on Kick. All right, he calls me Nuxanor every time, but whatever, mm. I'll forgive him. Uh, anyway, so <laughs> he, uh, uh, he, he he's just reading shit. Okay, he's gaining knowledge and information. Okay, that's not just about the making money because his streams well, are on Wikipedia, bro. Wikipedia yeah, Wikipedia is not a research. Yeah, right, whatever. Yeah. Anyway, so but the streams are are half the size, you know, of the the big money making debate epic Gotham streams. But to be, to be the person that he is and how he presents himself, he needs to do that research and shit. So if you spend an hour on Reddit instead of an hour researching some obscure battle in some random country, um, you have literally yeah. you are a lower power level than you could have been. Maybe yeah. I, yeah. I think Something that's to... uh, especially. I just <laughs> bullshit around online. I don't do anything important. Yeah. Well, hey, as long, if, as long as you market yourself as such, that's fine. As long as people market themselves as very serious and then they aren't, then I get triggered. Something that Mudahar said that a lot of people don't know, and I've seen this come up so many times, and a lot of people just won't believe it, but nine to fives are perfectly fine. There are a lot of people that work nine to fives like, God, I wish I could just be self-employed. It'd be so cool. Like, this is the dream. And for some people, it is because some people are really good at self-management. Yeah, Most yeah. people are not. Um, I just want to also say my mm -hmm. nine to five is also my own business. So it's, it's, sure. it's also like I get more benefits out of yeah, it. Yeah, but like regardless, I'm just saying that there are a lot of people where like the nine to five is nice because it gives you hardcore structure in your day. You've got like that's your income. You've got your free time afterwards. And it's like Friends. boom, boom, boom. There are, yeah, Cringe. there are a lot of people that I've met. I know this is true for every single one of you. There are a lot of people that I've met where it's like, oh, my God. This guy has so much talent and so much potential, and he's going nowhere in life because he doesn't have somebody managing him. This guy can't self-direct. Sure. Um, mm -hmm. There are so many people like that where it's like, uh, I, like I can think of even even people like um, I don't know how much you guys follow like all, everything that has been running around in my life. Do you know John Zerka? Uh, yeah, 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 sure, sure. sure. Yeah. Zerka is a really good example of a guy who this guy could be a millionaire. He could be making seven figures a year, but he needs a full-time manager babysitter. He needs somebody to tell me you need to wake up. You need to. Get rid of the blow, okay? Stop talking to these girls. Go on these shows. I'm going to book you flights for this. Boom, 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 boom. And if somebody was like hardcore micromanaging his life, that dude would be a millionaire. Easy. Um, and I know so many people like this. But I mean, on my example, own, someone that I know like that, uh, if you would have actually been posting videos on YouTube five years ago, you'd be double the size today. Are you talking to me? Yeah. Like about me? Oh, yeah, yeah I know. I mean, don't remind me. I'm just saying, um, I'm just saying, yeah. you would have had a manager or drugs. You could have made, you could have. No, you you know, yeah, the starting YouTube light was a huge blunder for me. But, you know, hey, whatever. We all make our mistakes. Yeah. Um, who would we, oh, Rikada. Nick Rikada is probably another example of that. If he had somebody more closely, like, micromanaging all of his shit, like, yeah, like, you could be doing so much better, yeah. but on your own. <laughs> his wife yeah, was his supplier instead. No. Yeah, temptations and stuff are so much harder when you are, because even if you work, like, a nine to five, like, if you're going to do drugs, like, that's a Friday, Saturday thing. But when you're self-employed, I mean, drugs can be an on-the-job thing. <laughs> you know, like, after, True. like, always going to get mad at me if I'm wasted while I'm streaming. Um, I mean, hey, some of my best videos is me lighting a fat blunt before and then getting Jesus. started. So, I mean, hey. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, it's, it's a it's a hard one. Yeah, yeah. I, I feel like I feel like when it comes to like any form of like self employment or like YouTube stuff or anything, it's like I, I feel like Caleb. You can say the same with like Sour Boys too. It's like you do you work like a nine to five at that, or are you like is it a twenty four seven? You're connected to that as well all day every day. I'm a prisoner. Nice. Jesus, I'm Christ. an indentured servant to my own mistakes. Absolutely. Yeah, Hell it's yeah. awesome though. I love it. I would say it's like, uh, I mean, pretty much all hours of the day, I'm per doing something in regard or looking at something or some some kind of shit like yeah. that. I feel like that's, that's also a thing that makes like a lot of YouTube, like the people really successful on this platform is like the people that kind of act in that way too. Like all of us, I would say that every single one of us here is working 24 seven. Like we all are stuck in that mind. And I'll say it like it is like, even though that I, I work outside of YouTube and I still have this, if I spend a day not doing something like Jen can, Jen can attest for this all the time when we're because you every month I'll we'll have like a weekend where we kind of get away and disconnect from stuff, or at least as a plan. There's never really a disconnection, it's always like I got my email on, I'm always like on call for something. Um, and it's hard to detach from that because the moment you do, it's like I feel like the biggest, laziest piece of shit if I'm completely detached from everything. Um, or I take like a day or a weekend sure. off or something. Um, and even if like, sometimes it's like kind of into the head because like on YouTube and like on social media, it's always in our, in any space, you're always, you, you have to be grinding, you know, like you can't, you probably shouldn't miss a day to stream. You, like if something massive happens, it can completely change your Bro, day, right? Bro, don't like even you have start. To.
the community meme on my shit is that every time I travel, like something happens in the world. You have no mm -hmm. idea how frustrating it is. And then I feel bad for whoever I'm with. If it's a girlfriend or, or wife or whatever the f like, I'll be just like looking at my phone. I remember when I went to um, Melina, my ex-wife was dealing with a bunch of shit relating to some court stuff. And mm -hmm. I travel and I'm like, okay, I'll go fucking <laughs> spend two weeks with you to figure your shit out. I can fly and the twin out. twin towers happen. But almost. Oh I Every fly out time. of here. I fly out of... of the United States on like October sixth, okay. Oh, and I land in Sweden. God. I'm like, no, God, why couldn't Hamas have waited two weeks? These Jews Bro, are the dying off dude. my stream right now. And I'm like watching every person cover. Every time I leave, there's like some crazy breaking news shit. And I'm like watching on my phone. Like every else, like fifty thousand viewers, seven million view video. And I'm watching these parts like Mudahar getting all these views. And I'm like. I can't stream. I'm stuck Bro, in some hotel. I did hotel. not cover October 7th. I'm stuck okay? in some hotel I, I, I <laughs> watching these people, these undeserving <laughs> getting all the usual like, <laughs> me. I can't even cover it. God damn it. Let, Mr. Borelli, you come to Israel. I will, I will give you a tour, okay? I'll give you the craziest tour. No, it's a... It's, Coming, I, where, I, wait, where are you at? Israel. Wait, do you really? Oh, I'm actually going in yeah. three days for two weeks, so. You're, <laughs> wait, you're going to Israel in three days? Hell yeah, I'm going to West Bank, interview people, hopefully not get assassinated. Okay. Are you, I am are you not going to the real? West Bank. Oh my However, God. Uh, I'll definitely get a coffee with you or something. Where, where do you, you live? West... Oh, I know you definitely live in Tel Aviv. 100% you do. I do not. Good guess, you though. Don't? Nice really? try. No. Nice oh. try. I thought that's where all the femboys were from, but okay. Yeah, I'm the only, fem <laughs> the, the only femboy out of Tel Aviv. <laughs> I actually don't know anything about. I make a ton of assumptions about you. Just have a VTuber avatar, and I, I'm going to be honest. I, I do hate racist. VTubers. I am it's, it's incredibly. Like, hold yes. on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> but, it's like I feel like I feel like naming a city in Israel is like. You, you, how many other cities are there? There's only one other one that no, I know. What? That's not true. He's been looking into the terrorist attacks in yeah. every single city in the country. There are at least five like, cities in Israel. Okay, yeah, sure. so, how exactly. many cities are there? There's literally only two in my mind. It's Tel Aviv and Jerusalem. That's literally yeah. it. Those are the two important the ones. Yeah, the country's so. Small. How many cities can you have? At you least can three. Quite a few of them in there. Jesus Christ! It's like in the United States. Like the U.S. is big. Like this is the only country that has like the most cities. Like if you ask Canada, it's like how many cities exist in Canada? I'm like I don't know. Toronto, Vancouver, Montreal, Calgary. Other than that, what the hell? <laughs> you know, like <laughs> in the middle of nowhere, like something. Come on, Newfoundland. It's like it's off by thirty I mean, minutes. It's pretty memorable. Bro, that's a fine. That's an see. That's where you. Up. It's that's a an meme. entire province yeah exactly <laughs> but i don't know it's a it's a it's i can't believe you're actually going there don't you like this is it's you're going to like the west bank like the actual danger zone yeah i feel like i've well it's not it's not really the danger zone okay they exaggerate a little bit all right listen i lived in la for three years okay it can't be that oh, sure. bad never mind yeah. <laughs> bro you're oh yeah i mean i guess that's true la is a shit pile <laughs> my biggest fear is always just like i know that if i get killed by some crazy palestinians there's everybody's gonna like use it for their own political bullshit like the idea of hassan having some video of like oh i know he got killed because he was being racist there or some nazi using it was like oh told you muslims were dangerous haha <laughs> with this woke loser just got you know ramallah 2.0 like yeah man we'll see it, it should be really, fun uh, yeah you're really you're really like tempting faith there you're gonna give your biggest political opponent and Edge right there if you go out. Listen, you if he, really, if he goes really out, I don't think he'll care. I'm, I'm, I'm going to bring like a, I'm, I'm, I've got like two different white PPD girls that I'm bringing with me, one with a knife, one with a gun. And if it oh, looks great. like I'm going to be abducted at any point in time, I've instructed both of them to try to kill me so that at least like it, I can go out on a meme of like some crazy girl, you know, cutting my throat. Uh, yeah. so. I, think, I think you're at more risk for being like Johnny Somali out there. Like he got his ass beaten by a bunch of Israelis. Dude, dude Johnny like Somali time. disturbs the peace. And okay? he deserves it. Yeah. And so he, that's and different. He deserves okay. it. Yeah. Wait, did you guys see what like happened? PewDiePie got the worst faith interpretation of his thing. He comes out with a video talking about like people going to Japan up the uh, like. There's this one. I want to say it's like this one like group on Twitter or something. I don't know if it's like a website or something, but they were just like PewDiePie is like going up against Johnny Somali because he doesn't want the internet to ruin like his experience out there oh i'm like no God. i think he's just going after johnny somali for being like the one abject dumbass out in any of these countries i, don't know. I saw him say uh so first of all do you see johnny somali wants to sue pewdiepie that's the greatest meme of all time See, I think, he wants to sue everyone. I think he wants to sue all of us <laughs> he's, but he's already said he, he he said i can expect papers soon and that was two months ago so yeah. jesus Maybe, maybe he international maybe defamation laws are good luck Chi. even for <laughs> even for national bro if you ever wanted to cover something just tell me you're starting to sue people for defamation that's the only reason i started talking about shkreli again oh yeah because you did that you i think you kind of walked or i don't want to say you walked back but you softened up some of this stuff in a video because i think shkreli contacted you and as soon as i saw that i was like oh shkreli you mean the guy that uh scammed the healthcare shit and lied about the yeah sue wait me. 
Okay, hold on. Yeah, okay, okay. People. I need you, I need you to give me I need you to give me like a clearance on like Shrelly. So I don't know what's true and what isn't. I've had so much conflicting shit about this. Apparently, was he scamming the average person? Or was he scamming insurance companies? Um. Okay. If I'm being fair, it's a it's complicated. But what it okay. looked like was actually happening. Um. Oh man, I have to dive super deep into this. Okay. But it looked okay. like what was actually happening. The problem with what he was doing with this business. So they did up the cost on some drug or whatever. And his argument was that the, well, the cost is being passed on to insurance anyway, which is only ever half true because, well, at the end of the day, insurance premiums have to be by people too. Insurance companies choose what they cover and what they don't. So that's not really the best argument. The issue with right. Shkreli is it looked like what he was doing was he was looting some of his companies to pay other companies to make sure that things were always running well. And you're not really supposed to do that without good reason. You can't have like four or five companies, especially if you're running funds for other people. You can't have like a fund and misrepresent like the portfolio gains or whatever by looting other parts of your businesses, especially mm -hmm. ones that have other owners, and then putting those money into putting that money to other accounts. And I think that's what he ultimately got for. Um, for as far as the drug stuff where everybody was mad at him, I think it was just a time in US history where people were looking to get mad and Shkreli is like the most hateable person in the world and has no concept of managing, you know, his, uh, you know, his PR. That's why when he was in jail, or was he out of jail and he tweeted about like, give me a piece of Hillary Clinton's hair. It's like, bro, shut the up. what are you doing um yeah but what's he what's he up to these days is he still like uh did he come out with like a whole bounty of cash because the last time i looked at him he was like doing some healthcare crypto thing or whatever the fuck it was yeah i don't actually Huge. know where he's at um i don't know what he's really doing i know he's working on some healthcare crypto thing but i don't know where that is at, at the moment yeah yeah he's uh i don't hear much about him he got released to, like that one halfway house where he was like streaming league and like talking about like crypto shit for a little bit mm -hmm. um he seems no, like we, i cautiously say he does seem like a foolish uh, dude or maybe i'm just a, like maybe i like autistic kind of people or whatever i don't even mean that as an insult just like the type of mind he has he seems like the kind of person that like i, I would be like or i'd be friends with this kind of person like his demeanor but it's hard to separate the like i don't even know like with that new crypto healthcare thing his his crypto wallet got scammed and all the money got stolen out of there he says because he downloaded a torrent with a key yeah, logger you told in me it. he downloaded like a he down he showed me the exact torn or whatever of like the yeah porn. and it's like, and it bruh, was just like even if that's true like how are you gonna how are you gonna get how, how first of all how is this money even that easily accessible and then come on you you literally got federally felony for almost this exact type of thing like even if what you were saying was true like who's gonna believe you right it's like walking into a room and there's like a bloodied you know child who's dead and you're standing there and even if you didn't kill him you're like yeah i understand like me <laughs> you know like yeah, it's, well, like, I get he, it, you know, yeah. He, even in, even in his situation it's like he's obviously intelligent when it comes to computers it's like you're really just gonna download who first off like who downloads torrents of porn like in today's day and age you know it's like all of the websites are easily accessible like who does that mm -hmm. you know like even with like movies it's like nobody pour in some movie these days they just go to like a free movie distribution site and just hit play mm -hmm. and call it a day so it's like the other thing it's like how do we believe you yeah it, it's like i can understand my dad like my dad will do stupid shit like he'll be like he's a he's a cardiologist smart guy but when it comes to computers he's like so yeah paypal just told me that thirty thousand dollars has been taken from my account what it, like he'll oh. freak out and i'm like oh dad don't worry he'll be like like every week he's like oh yeah our amazon account is like getting like shut down i'm like no 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 Dad. you gotta look at the email he's like what it says amazon and then like, i'd show him how to look at the url and he's like oh yeah uh, you're right dick sucker like, 69 at aol.com isn't actually amazon that's crazy <laughs> yeah literally, literally that's like me and him me and him talking about it and he's like he's like how do you know all this stuff and i'm like dad i went to engineering school actually it's like no dad i'm not i'm not a total idiot <laughs> like how do you know about that well, i got scanned last month and i've been <laughs> yeah, like like Turns dude, out, it, like if you mention Lady Gaga doesn't want to collab. Yeah, no. like if, like if you, dude, if you mention like crypto to my dad, he's like, wait, you can download money? Like, that's, <laughs> that's pretty cool. Uh, that's like, pretty cool. You can, wait, you can download money to your computer? What the? One of the like, that's one ahead. of the hardest things for me to understand is, I guess people can be very intelligent, but they either they lack either curiosity or something mm. else is going on where it's like, how can you have so much knowledge in this one area and be so utterly in this other area? The best example I can think of is in all of human history. Do you know Ben Carson? I've heard of him, yeah. Like, uh, this is a guy who, th this guy, you listen to him talk as a Republican. One of the more famous interviews he gave after running was this, he was talking to somebody on some show about gay people. And he's like, well, you know, people go into prison straight and they and they come out gay. And how do you explain that? You know, if they really think gay. 
Like this is the type of stuff he's doing. This guy, okay, this guy is not just a surgeon, okay. This guy's not just a surgeon, meaning he's gone through it. This guy is not just a neurosurgeon who works on brains, okay. This guy is a neurosurgeon who pioneered the surgery for separating conjoined twins at the head, okay. That's the level of insane medical knowledge that this guy's at. This is what he did medically. But then he steps out of that field. He says the most – like, how is this possible? <laughs> There's no shot. What are you, what are you doing? I think yeah. it's just like – it's like – it's. I think it's like especially when it comes to technology or something. It's like I feel like if you don't keep on to it, there's like a falling off point, right? It's like – you know you play like a – video game of like sam fisher splinter cell like 60 years of age and he like whips out it's like all right i'm like i'm like hacking into the system for you and everything i'm like you're not doing that at 60 bro like i don't give a f how long you've worked in the nsa sure you're not like you know what i mean like it's just it's super unnatural it's like my dad for instance like he like the last piece of phone technology that he was actively using i mean he'll ha he has an iphone now but the last thing he truly understood was like the old blackberry mess like the the old school like keypad in your hand mm -hmm. that's the last thing he ever knew after when he got his like iphone or whatever he was like this thing calls it sends messages and i can watch youtube on it that's yeah. about it you know that's where his mind goes to like if you sat down with him and you asked him it's like i hate texting but then you'll you'll ask him like dad you remember the days of pagers he's like Bro, I love pagers dude like that shit you just sat down one buzz you look at the letter scroll by easy peasy uh, yeah. you talk about messages he's like i don't know what the fuck a group chat is an sms and be like the fuck is any of this nonsense have you ever so, heard of, go ahead go ahead uh, have you ever heard of the, the term the, weaponized incompetence yes yes i yes. wonder sometimes with now. that yeah it'll be like a girl asks her boyfriend like hey can you like do, the, do dishes? the dishes and the guy and he, will be like he breaks i don't know how to dishes. work the dishwasher there's so many like buttons or whatever and it's like you just put together a computer like yesterday. You can't. Oh, dude, I've done that with the laundry pressure. machine. I, I've done that with a laundry machine. I'm like, oh, dude, there's like 10 knobs and like, I don't know what load. <laughs> yeah, what I'm setting like... do I put it on? Do I put it on dude. synthetic <laughs> laundry or do I put it yeah. on? How about Meanwhile, sleeping? but on your computer, you're like, so I use the H265, 7264 because of the VP7 encoder, blah, blah, blah. It's like, you can't work a, no shot. You understand this. You can't work a wash machine. Yeah. I wonder sometimes it's for people in technology. They're just like, they're lazy. It's just, it's a lazy thing. It's a choice. It's not like a, I truly can't figure this out. It's more like, I know how to make my life work without these things. So I haven't bothered to learn it. Yeah. Have you guys figured I, out how I mean, to sweep yet? Look. Me? No. I, I, I somehow it gets sweep. dustier every time I sweep. I don't know. Yeah, I know. It's Dude, a bigger mess. That's why I love. That's why I like the something. Actually, it's one of the things where it's like, even when it comes down to like, you know, in the time is money question we just had, it's like, I had my mom like I showed her XQC stuff, and she's like, <laughs> "Why doesn't he clean up around the house? You clean up your house." I'm like, "Ma, this guy makes millions of years shitting, like, watching videos on the internet. I'd be doing the same thing XQC is doing." Higher maids bro time is money dude i'd be sitting on stream every single day of my life hiring the maid like it's not i feel like for some people it's just like even in that case it's not even like they can't do it it's just like bro i don't have the 20 minutes to even learn or, or change this one aspect of my I life i, can, like, I think you're giving to him too it. much credit honestly no i i think xqc is a very intelligent guy i really do believe no, that. i'm, I'm think not shitting on xqc i just mean in general i don't think it comes from um a case of calculating ah yes if i did this i would technically make more money if i divide if i devoted my time to something different as opposed to something you know menial labor like this so that's why i became incompetent in a certain field i think that's that's being it's giving them credit man i wish i could find this paper i bring it up so much i need to look for it to make sure this is real but i remember reading a long time ago this must have been like eight or nine years ago that um people who are older can learn languages faster than people who are younger um right. because of your capacity for learning and studying and all of this you can actually do it faster than people that are younger the reason really? why kids who are younger learn languages faster than people that are older has nothing to do with like neuroplasticity or any of this bullshit because as we've studied more and more like we find that blains are brains are plastic for way longer in our life for way more than we ever thought as long as you keep using it but what happens mm. is if you're a kid you're a kid you're in a high chair and you're looking around and people are talking the only thing you can do is learn the language okay there are no context clues there is no like cognitive process for what's going on like you're you have to learn the language just do or die but when you're an adult and you get dropped even if you get dropped some area and it's like well do you need to learn the language well, hold on i can translate on my phone uh you know somebody says like hamburguesa and you look around it's like okay well i'm gonna Burger King. Okay. All right. It's a hamburger. I see what this guy. Okay. I understand what's going on here. Right. You yeah. can use so many other cognitive like things 
to get around actually learning the language that what you end up doing is you have all these other shortcuts and things so you don't have to learn the language because you have other ways of reasoning about what's going on basically and i think for things like technology it's the same where it's like if you gave an old person a cell phone you're like listen you need to learn this shit or i'm gonna kill you okay they'll learn it they can but they've already like developed a routine and a rhythm in their life so much that they don't really need it so they don't actually force themselves to learn and like ah you know fuck it yeah i I I feel like that's what's happening more often than not what? Learning at learning at gunpoint, just being like, I'm gonna fucking kill you if you don't learn this. Because I have so many True. people in my family, especially, who just don't learn shit about computers, and yeah, it's exactly and what you're saying. One hundred percent. I used to have the same issue. Um, anytime mm-hmm. I would like date a girl or whatever, yeah, she'd call me over and ask me questions like so many times until eventually, yeah, I bought the shotgun back there, and I'm like, listen, if you call me for the same problem three times, I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> Two times is all it ever took for anybody to learn what the f- they needed to do. Man. Yeah. No, it, it, I th- I feel like I feel like it's just like my dad. He also now that I think about it, it's like I think the other thing that shifted is like both me and my brother. Like he's also like he's he like, he has an engineering background as well too. Like he works in this field, so it's like we're we're like the only two comp sci guys that are in the house. And like ever since we went to school, and like we ever ever since we became like the I guess you could say the genius bar at home. Like my dad is oh, no. like Aww. stop giving a about learning anything because i remember when i was a kid like he would come home with like the macintosh the old school like blue mac he's like bro look at this wait wait the the all-in-one the big thing the The the, all-in-one he he, he, he came home with the mac the all-in-one mac and he was like he he sent that back like after like a week because it's like oh only idiots use this i'm gonna go back to a pc (laughs) like old school like windows because like he'd be the one like he, like he he went back to like Windows ninety eight. He's like, this is this is what real intelligent people use. Like fucking, you can actually do something with this. Mm-hmm. And like the, he would come home with like the AOL discs and shit, and he'd be like, all right, we're gonna plug ourselves into dial up and see what the internet is all about. Like he would be the one doing it. Yeah. And then and I remember like he like AOL would have this like browser that like it would have these little bars at the top like your mail it would be like the first notification like it would tell you how many mails like you see that that's how many people email daddy and i'm like okay and i'm like you know years later he's like around the time windows xp comes out he's like well i'm already tapped out of this shit yeah. i'll let you figure it out for me yeah. <laughs> like goddamn i remember like when he was just like wait you can access the files from this computer over here from that computer like how does that work i'm like dad it's called a network he's like wild stuff like he'll he'll come home like connect a printer he's like how the fuck did it figure out everything in my house how how did my phone figure out the printers there <laughs> i'm like you can't be this much of a caveman anymore dude like you gotta figure out i feel like i'm roasting him too much but it's it's par for the course it's like people just stop giving a crap and it's like i guess that's a better explanation it's like once you realize it's like you don't have to do it yeah and you can just rely on everything else or you know you're already like debt set in your ways you don't really have a reason to learn mm-hmm. um i guess it's kind of the same for like even content creators or like people in general it's like it once to, you know what works it happens to all of us too right like look at how many yeah. times like bro youtube changes their layout like a little bit and the whole internet is like oh, i can't fucking find anything what the fuck is why the fuck is it changes i, I use old reddit all the black like people freak the fight i was like bro it's a new interface. Learn it, okay? Jesus, yeah. People, people well, lose their with, mind on any of that, yeah. Even with the new interface, it's like even with the new YouTube stuff. I don't know if you guys have seen it. It is genuinely the shittiest interface I've seen in a long time. Is it so, though? Is it actually? Because people say this with every new interface that comes out. No, and I'm like, bro, this one, like, I was, I was literally like trying to like. So I have it on like this computer when I'm browsing it. It literally feels like somebody took the old ass iPad and threw that shit right onto the main screen like it's where is it's not unusable where hmm? what is the new interface what changed is there a change um it is like so basically your videos in like the top left where it used to be um the bottom section it's not the comments anymore it's just like recommended videos and shit and like the comments are on the right side it literally is like if you have an ipad watch youtube on it for like a minute it's literally that exact interface brought to like the desktop oh, shit. computer i have an ipad yeah. i know what you're talking about i guess i haven't seen that on my desktop yet but yeah okay. it's uh it got introduced like a day ago to me so they're like rolling it out really slowly it's like they it, i don't have an issue with the interface it's like why bring the f- ipad interface to the computer it's like it just doesn't make any it's like a change that i feel somebody brought over at like the headquarters and it's like we need to refresh things okay we'll just copy mm-hmm. one interface from the other and call it a day man like, as it's you not s- unusable as you mm-hmm. say that i really wonder and i worry now i wonder if i wonder if desktops are going to be phased out at some point or it's going to be like a desktop pc is going to be seen as kind of like an enthusiast or like a like a worker thing 
I mean, um, there already probably. kind of is. Like, laptops are shifting to a whole different processor style now. Like, sure. Getting- yeah, I, got, I I ditched my laptop after I, I bought. Dude, I got. Mm-hmm. I'm a Apple whore now. Oh my god, I bought an iPad. This is the most magical device in the world. Holy dude, shit! I got, I ditched my laptop. What is that? Bro, this is the best MacBook. Where it's like this. It's the new processor. Like it's their iPad processor in this. Oh, the M. 26- I got the. I just got the M4 Bro, yesterday. By the way, so <laughs> twenty six hour battery life. Yo, I take this shit out. Bro, I was like, when the Keffels video and I was rendering it out, I did the last 20 minutes of the edit on this completely f- ass naked in my bed. Yeah. Like at my hotel, just like battery didn't die. Thing didn't get f- hot to the touch. Worked it. Yo, rendered the video out, compressed it, uploaded it, all with like 80% battery. Yo, Muda, I have something like- better. I have something better. I have an mm-hmm. editor. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Okay, but see, here's the thing. If I hire an editor, I can't, like, I, I don't want to micromanage their ass, okay? Like, that's my f-ing problem. Like, I don't know. I, I probably have to end up getting it at some point. Like, f-ing. everyone just gets, like, a benefit out of it. I'm too much of a f-ing control freak, so it's mm-hmm. it's still it. me on that grind. But I'm just I'm, I'm just doing it to provide jobs. What can I say? What can I say? And I pay taxes. You're just doing it to be f-ing lazy, bro. <laughs> 100%. No, dude, it's because you don't understand. It's my time management, okay? I, I realized that if I could record two videos in the span that it would take to just record one and edit it, I would technically be uh, more uh, effective in my workflow. True. I feel like That's I feel me. like you That's just need me. to start doing you just need to start doing methamphetamine or cloning yourself. But anyways, if you uh ladies and gentlemen, this has been a, another episode of the Somewhere Near Podcast. We've been keeping it going for one hour and twenty minutes. Jesus Christ, it's been a long episode, but a good one. Yeah. Um Destiny always is a great guest. We actually had a really good conversation this week. Sometimes we have episodes where it's like a guest comes on and it's like deer in headlights. Dude, so, I hate a guest that won't burn any bridges. You know what I mean, dude? I, dude, I love I have a guest dude, on, and they'll just happen to love everybody. All right, dude. You need to require when guests come on. I need to throw one co- public content creator <laughs> out of the bus right now. Okay? Yes, yes, absolutely. <laughs> one like, person, person online real person. you just can't stand. They'll be like, uh, uh, Sneeko. Like, okay, dude, that doesn't. Bro, count. That's oh, yeah. I, the one thing that I love Whoa. is like, anytime somebody comes on, it's like they have like an actual public personal spat, and it's like, I really wish the best for this person. Look at the. You don't mean that. Yeah, like, I, don't, the don't, same don't thing. Lie to me. <laughs> Don't lie to me about that, dude. The I mean, Shadow, I mean, I shadow Lord makes. guy, you know the Shadow Lord guy that made the video on Wendigoon. That guy. Yeah. So, uh, the, uh, my favorite thing was he said that he criticized Wendigoon publicly, and he got hate for criticizing Wendigoon publicly. And Wendigoon never publicly asked the hate to stop, and he was like I'm criticizing like, okay. him for that. Damn. It's like it's like it's like it's like when somebody like hits at me and it's like, bro, why are you hitting back? They're like a fraction of your size. I'm like, I don't give up. You're up. punching down. You're punching Who gives down. Gives a shit. All right. Just you own it. Fire in my why are you camp? hitting back? They're a fraction of size. Yeah, that means they're really easy to bully. That's the perfect <laughs> target, of well, course. Then, well, like my Bugs my response to that, I'm like my my response, and I'm like, why the. F- does the U.S. government invade the smallest island in the world? Bro. <laughs> oh, We're not going to war with Russia or China, bro. We're nuking Libya. What are you talking about? Yeah, Hell yeah. I'm going to go to town, dude. Like, get out of here. Yeah, true. But, ladies and gentlemen, thanks a lot for showing up. If you like your stuff, please like, comment, and subscribe. Just like if you dislike it, head on over to Destiny or follow the Omni Liberal for the most based N word drops on the internet you could imagine. Uh, not really. He, Destiny is not a racist individual. Are you? Are you not? Uh, just against VTubers, but I mean... Just Un- against VTubers. Understandable. Oh. Look, I Which generally hate white people that say the N-word, but there are exceptions to every rule. You know what? I can <laughs> agree with you, too. I do as well, so there you go. Yeah. We are, yeah, God, we're that. And if you want to follow some safe for work content, Oompaville and me are great alternatives to these two degenerates. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we are out.